Uh, today for the mini lesson, finding financial awareness. This is my, I don't know if you know this about me, but this is really my favorite conversation and topic to talk about, about personal finance, because awareness around your money and your finances is a pivotal moment. I think when you have that type of awareness in your life, when you're wanting to make change. So, you know, we're doing the my way, my, my money, my way mini lessons. It's a six day event. And this is all to celebrate this, the release of my brand new book, my money, my way, taking back control of your financial life. So today I wanted to do a mini lesson all around financial awareness. And I mentioned, oops, I mentioned in my Instagram post on that graphic, that decision making awareness. And today we're going to be getting into the difference between just recognition and decision making awareness, which I call that in my book. Um, in fact, I have, I have, I have my book right here, right here, and I'm just using it as reference to pull, um, to keep me on track and on schedule because this is a mini lesson. And we're going to finish this in about 10 to 20 minutes and have you guys walking out um, today with some homework. All right. So with awareness, it's kind of a two edged sword. And it's one of those things that either one, we're too scared to address our finances. More importantly, I think our starting point. Right. It's like one of those things like I don't want to see it. I don't want to deal with it. I don't want to take care of it right now. Um, it could be that maybe, you know, you get anxiety around checking your bank account online. You're not opening your mail. You don't want to see your credit card statements. And I say all these because I was once in that place where it was like my big thing for me was my credit card statements. I knew about the minimum payments. And that was the lie that I told myself about my debt. My debt, my debt's not too bad. I can handle the minimum payments, you know, until it got to the point where my minimum payments were over a thousand dollars a month just for the minimums. So I think when we talk about financial awareness, the reason this is so crucial and important is because it's going to allow you to understand fully your starting point. Why is that so important? All of this, some, a lot of this anxiety that we feel around our finances, sure, it's spurred from many different things, but a lot of that has to do with the unknown, the not knowing when it comes to our finances, maybe not knowing our overall debt, not knowing what state step to take next, not knowing what financial goal to take, not knowing all these different things, right? Versus knowing exactly where we are starting, understanding the mountain we have to climb and really getting that clarity around, okay, this is my starting point. And sometimes, and most times, I can say this for myself too. The starting point that you see yourself in isn't always the place that we want to recognize and see, right? But until we can address it and until we can recognize it for what it is, it's going to be really hard to make the financial progress and success that we're wanting on our own financial transformations. And that's just the truth. There's no more hiding behind the excuse of, I don't know. There's no more hiding behind, you know, that fear of not wanting to look at it or deal with our starting place. And I think, it, you know, one of the things I want to mention here too is that there's no shame. There's no guilt around our different starting places. I remember when I first started, it was $77,000 worth of debt with a negative net worth by a lot. And I had to come to terms with that. And I had to accept that. Because for me, living in the unknown 
is a lot scarier than living in the known. I would rather know than deal with this anxiety and this stress of not knowing. So that's the first thing, things, you know, understanding, accepting, and recognizing your starting point. What does that mean, your starting point? Well, it means what you truly have for your debt, for example. Now, I'm not just talking about your minimum payments. I'm talking about the overall picture of your debt, the overall balance of your debt. I'm not just talking about your starting place for your budget. I'm talking about looking at what you're actually spending. Not what you want to spend, not where you want to go on this journey, but where you are right now. And I had mentioned earlier that there is a difference between recognition and awareness and decision-making awareness. So let's talk about the difference in that. So awareness and recognition is, oh yeah, I'm overspending in my food budget. Okay, that's awareness, right? You're aware that you're overspending in your food budget. Here's what decision-making awareness is. It's, oh, I'm overspending in my food budget because I'm really tired when I get home and I gravitate towards convenience and I don't want to cook and I don't want to take the time to be in the kitchen. And because I recognize and I'm aware of this, I'm going to start meal planning to help me combat some of this issue that I have around convenience and cooking for myself. Do you see the difference? It's not just being aware, but being aware, recognizing it, understanding why it's happening, and then producing change. You're taking action from the insight that you gather from that recognition and awareness. And that's really important. So what I'm saying here is it's not just important to say, oh, I'm spending my credit on my credit card more than I have the money to pay it off. It's, oh, I'm using my credit card even though I know I don't have the money because I'm dealing with maybe stress at home and I'm going to the mall and buying all these things because it makes me feel better about myself. I recognize this, so I'm gonna incorporate a new healthy habit or hobby into my life that I could pick up instead of resorting to swiping my credit card. That's decision-making awareness. And it's really hard to get to that point of understanding without first recognizing. And that's what we're talking about today. Now, in today's video, when we're talking about financial awareness, and some of you are gonna hate me for this, we're gonna be talking about tracking your spending. And I know you're probably saying, Miko, I know you tell me this all the time, I hear it all the time, but now it's actually time to do it. Because today, I hope you walk away from this mini lesson understanding how important and crucial this step is into completing and building a financial plan on top of this really solid foundation of financial fulfillment. It's crucial. Here is something crazy to think about. Okay, it was funny. Ryan was over here the other day and we were talking about, you know, how budgeting is really kind of this basic concept, this almost like concept where it's like the basics of personal finance, right? When people think about personal finance, they gravitate and some reason think of budgeting kind of being at the, lo the lower part of that totem pole. But it's actually the most important you cannot do any of the other building blocks of personal finance without a realistic budget that you can successfully implement in your life. And that is something really crazy to think about. Think, you can't save. I mean, you can save, but not with intention, purpose, and 
keeping that money in your savings account, paying off debt, investing. You can't do any of that without a budget. You can't pay off debt until you know how much money you can throw at your debt. You can't start investing until you have a clear plan and goal with investing and how much extra income you have in your budget to throw at investing. Your budget really is that telltale sign where and roadmap for your financial goals. And I talk about that in the book and we'll be getting into this. My, I, I'm just gonna let it out. I have a mini lesson coming out about realistic budgeting. A budget is not restrictive. It is honoring you, period. Full stop. A budget has your back. And I think that when we can get to a budget that works well in our lives and we can implement that budget successfully and have it and use it as a tool to reach our financial goals, this mindset shift happens of, oh, that's a restrictive tool. It's keeping me from doing what I want to do. It's keeping me from what I truly want to spend to all of a sudden, it's like, this tool is helping me reach my financial goals and dreams and allowing me to live the life that I want to live in a way that's the most important to me. And then becomes very exciting. So one of the things about financial awareness though, and getting to the point where we can even create that budget is understanding our spending. And I'm just gonna bring this up, you know, a couple of days ago I, I woke up and I'm, you know, when I wake up in the morning, it's like 3 4 o'clock in the morning and I lay in bed and I read some news and I check my emails and I came across this article and the article headline was, financial expert says to skip, uh, to skip tracking your spending because it's tedious, a waste of time and it keeps you from reaching your financial goals. And I'm like, Oh, and you know me, I'm all about the celebration of diversity in finance. I mean, I recognize that everyone does budgeting differently. I never shame anyone for having a different perspective than me or using a budgeting method that I don't use. Absolutely not. It's whatever works for you. But this really caught my eye and I'm like, mm, I'm going to read this because I wanted to get their perspective on why they were saying this. Because in my life and on my journey, I found the opposite to be true. So I'm like, okay, I'm, I want to read this, get their perspective. Their number one reason why tracking your spending doesn't work is because you have to spend time doing it. To me, that was a really lousy excuse. Because personal finance isn't all about simplification. It's about effectiveness. And how you simplify that effectiveness in your life, I think is, is dependent on each individual. But skipping the step of knowing where your money is going because you don't want to spend time on it, to me is ludicrous. And this part of awareness around our spending and our starting place I feel like is work that is necessary. Because when I look back on our journey in the entire budgeting process, everything from understanding our budget categories, everything from looking at our spending triggers and habits and how we deal with that with, you know, especially with our relationship what our relationship with money, are the emotional spending the maybe the problem areas of our spending. You know, it's like I it's like it's like saying I want to I want I don't understand where my money is going. I don't I don't know where it's going. I get my paycheck and then I turn around and it's gone. And it's like you just coming up with a budget and creating a budget ca category called everything else. It's like I have my bills and everything else. This is my everything else spending category. I think that when you skip this step, you miss the opportunity to be the most successful on your financial journey. So, you know, we talk about like on page 53, how to bring awareness to your spending. You can do this a couple of different ways. Track your spending. You can do that manually for a month, 
like I do. If you watch my Instagram, I track my spending. I take about five minutes every day to track my spending. That means me looking at my checking account on online and writing down those that spending and that income coming in. And if you spend cash like I do, it's saving your receipts and tracking those receipts maybe the following day. But that takes a full 30 days, right? And a lot of us are here now because we want to make transformation now. And you can do that. So what I recommend is using last month's bank statements or credit card statements. If there is an area of your life that has money movement, and when I say money movement, money going in or going out, you need to have and pull that bank statement. Because remember, we're not just wanting, we're talking about decision-making awareness here. We're not just looking for our credit card spending. We're looking at the entirety, the, all of our spending for the month because that's when we can really see those spending habits, triggers, and pain points for ourselves. I know that I'm asking for you to do work here. And I think that's why so many people are scared, especially like financial experts or influencers, they're scared to ask their community members to do work. So they give us and give you the most simplified version, the most simplified way of getting the job done. And I'm sorry, but there is no simplified version of this step. And I started the budget mom to be as real and as honest with you as I possibly can because I want you to be absolutely successful in finding financial fulfillment and reaching your dreams and learning to manage your money well. And this is a step that just cannot be skipped. I talk about, you know, I've talked before on my Instagram that so much of the time when we are listening to advice and different methods and different things on the internet and on socials about budgeting or paying off debt or saving, we hear the, the advice to simplify it as much as we can. Right, to make it easy on ourselves, to save time so we don't get overwhelmed or confused. But what happens when we do that is we give up effectiveness for simplification. It is not worth it. When you get to a place where you have an effective budget and financial plan in your life, then you can start looking at the areas that you can start simplifying. But not until you get to that point, not when you are building. Because being effective, having it be effective in your life is a lot more important than it being just simple. Okay, so tracking your spending. Now, when you are tracking your spending, the third type of thing that I have for today is I would love for you to use the highlighter method in this step. That's because you can knock out two birds with one stone with this. One, you're going to be able to categorize and organize your spending in a very visual, helpful way. And two, your budget categories form themselves. I get asked a lot when it comes to awareness, Miko, I'm really trying to understand my spending and starting point, but I don't know what budget categories I'm supposed to have in my life. How many should I have? Now I go into the book in around the chapter of, it's the $1,000 manicure and highlighting the blind spots. That's what the chapter is called. I go into that chapter talking about how many budget categories is too much or too, too little. Do you ever get to a point where you start to lose the effectiveness of awareness in your life when it comes to organizing and understanding your spending? And there is. If you have too many budget categories, like, you know, you have a hundred different budget categories, then the information that you are looking for is very overwhelming. If you have too uh, little amount of budget categories, then the information that you're looking for is hidden among just those few things. And what I mean by that, I had mentioned a 
having a budget category called everything else. Here's why that doesn't work. Because if your pain point in your spending is say eating out, and you're lumping that in with spending for everything else in your life, then it's gonna be really hard for you to track and pinpoint that eating out problem. Because the, one of the things when you start doing this and, and looking at this type of decision-making awareness, it's gonna seem like a slap in the face. I get so many, and it was like this for me. It's like, when I track my spending, I'm like, holy crap. $850 a month is going towards my minimum payments. That's just for my debt. Well, when I'm making $50, a couple hundred dollar minimum payments throughout the month, it doesn't seem that bad. Or, holy crap, I'm spending $1,000 a month on eating out. Doesn't seem that bad as you go through the month, but all of it added up, right? But I'm telling you, this is the slap in the face moment that all of us needs. Once you have highlight, using the highlighter method, the highlighter method is essentially taking different colored highlighters and highlighting all of your like transactions on your bank statement or on your manual expense tracker when you get, uh, if you're tracking your spending manually at the end of the month. So, that means like highlighting all of your clothing purchases in purple, all of your food purchases in green, all of your gas purchases in yellow. And you're gonna get these statements with all these different colored lines on them. And then I want you to add up each color. So you go through and add up all the yellow lines, add up all the green lines, give those colors a title. You know, maybe you, see on your on your statements you're highlighting maybe all of your different food purchases in yellow maybe just title it food and when you add all these up voila you have your budget categories based on the colors on your statements this is the starting point of a realistic budget you just made budget categories based on what you are really spending, not what you want to spend. This is your starting place. This is not where you have to stay. You are not stuck here. This is decision making awareness to say, wow, that's a lot of blue highlighter colors, okay, eating out. I need to sit and think about what is causing me to spend so much on eating out every single month. We need to think about, remember, this isn't just about awareness, it's about using that insight to take action and make change. But the first step is getting to a place where you understand what you're looking at when it comes to the information that's given to you in your statements and in your finances. This can be very scary for some people, it was for me. But I, what I want you to tell yourself, and we remember our, remember our mini lesson from yesterday, understanding your purpose and creating your why. If you have done that in your life, then no matter how scary this step may be, you are telling yourself right now, I have to do it. It's gonna be scary for me to look at this information but my why is way more important than that fear. And this is a perfect example of why that mini lesson yesterday was so dang important. So homework, you're gonna manually track your spending for an entire month, or if you don't want to wait to pull your bank statements, and we're gonna do a little bit of gathering of financial information in our lives right now. Because what you will learn on this journey is organization and finances go hand in hand. And that's something that I, I it's kind of funny, I unintentionally teach that and show that in my life. You know, I didn't start realizing I was so organized until people in my community started saying, Mika, oh my gosh, you're such an organized person. I, I, there was a time I wasn't like that. I became an organized individual strictly because of what I learned in my finances and, and taking on a financial routine in my life. They truly go hand in hand. 
Once you have your statements, you're gonna use the highlighter method to start highlighting like transactions, okay? And you're gonna assign that highlighter color a name. Now, if you get stuck, like for, for instance, a lot of people come to me and they say, Miko, I'm stuck because I'm highlighting all of my food transactions and I don't know if I should hi highlight my groceries and eating out as two different colors. Or am I just lumping it together in one food category? If you get stuck, start with just putting it in one category. Remember, you can always break out another category later on. The point here though, is to start the process of understanding and awareness around your spending. The next thing I want you to do after you have your highlighter colors titled and added up, I want you to circle two of those categories that surprised you. And what I mean by that, it's the spending categories where you're like, dang, I didn't know that was happening. And the reason I want you to highlight those ones is because those are the ones we need to address first. Because it's almost like they were happening underneath our nose, why? There's a reason. And so we need to look at that. That's the homework, one, two, and three. And don't worry, I'll go ahead and make sure that this homework and these types of uh, lessons are in the description in case you have to come back to this. And here's, you know, it's funny that the food budget is brought up so often when it comes to awareness is because yes, it's all food purchases, but not all food purchases might not just be the problem. The problem is eating out, right? And so in order for us to drill down a little more into that awareness, separating it out, the eating out expenses from the rest of our food purchases can help us do that. So if you're saying right now, and you know that about yourself, that's a great starting point. If you're saying, Miko, I know girl eating out is my problem. Then maybe when you're going through this process, you do have two different colors for that. I do Walmart grocery pickup. Yes, that has saved me a lot. Over the years, I have learned discipline around, especially when I'm out shopping for groceries, I'm usually now the type of person in and out. And it's so funny when I shared my spending diaries on my Instagram, someone was like, dang Miko, like you were in and out, got your list and done. I'm like, yes, I'm in and out because I have blinders on. I'm on a mission, okay. Get the lettuce, get the mayo, get out the door, Miko. <laughs> get it done. Is when I started doing Walmart grocery pickup, we're getting a little off sidetracked here, but I'm gonna share this because I think it's important and will help you. Walmart grocery pickup is amazing because not only do you stop yourself from kind of, you know, aimlessly wandering the aisles and throwing stuff in your cart, but it gives you the chance to price comparison before you buy. And like when you say, ketchup, when you search for ketchup, it gives you all the different brands of ketchup and all the different costs all in one place, like literally all on the one screen. And I love it because it solidified my thought. Store and generic brands are cheaper, obviously, than the big brands. And I've been able to save money on my grocery budget. It's Is it like hundreds of dollars worth of savings? No, but $50? is a win for me, I'll take it. I'll put that $50 towards my savings goals rather than spending it on a brand that's basically made in the same facility as a store or generic brand any day. Okay, so you have your homework. Remember our mini session from yesterday, discovering your why if you're feeling a little anxiety or fear around this step. And he, here's the thing, you don't have to do all this decision-making awareness in one day. Give yourself grace, give yourself patience. If you are feeling a little bit anxiety about looking at this type of financial information in your life, you're spending, maybe today you just start with printing out your bank statements. Tomorrow morning or evening or whenever you have free time and you're doing your budget routine, mine's in the morning when I have quiet time before my son gets up and I have my cup of coffee, maybe just 
Okay, I'm gonna get through half of this statement today, highlighting it. This does, this process is not an overnight thing. And I don't ever want you to feel like it has to be done in one day, because that's not realistic. But I also want you to build up the confidence that you can do this. Even with the fear, even with the anxiety that you may have, you can do this. And your why that you picked from yesterday is, is a reminder of why this is really important and why this is a necessary step. And, and I wanna take this time, you know, really quickly before I get off, it's true that my financial philosophy takes a little bit of a different approach than most. And in some, I'm the complete opposite. But I am so, and this is why I felt the need to write this book, because I felt like I had something I had to say. That you can tell too with these mini lessons, they're not your typical, you know, the first mini lessons are how to budget, how to debt, how to, how to save money. These more have to do with internal things self-discovery things, things that we can address with our feelings internally. And My Money, My Way, my brand new book, I've been told in the past, you know, Miko, your method leaves too many unanswered questions. Well, that means I did my job because I want you to answer those questions for yourself. My money, my way is came from a place of rebellion, of being so sick and tired of all these other financial experts and money experts telling me what I should value in my life and then making me feel bad about it, telling me I'm a failure, making me feel like I'm dumb, making me feel that I'm not right when it comes that I don't have the control and power to make those decisions financially in my life. This book is saying, yes, you do. And the only way you will truly be successful with your money is if you feel successful. You can do all these quote unquote steps that you're supposed to be doing all day long. But if it doesn't make you feel successful in your heart and in your gut, then it doesn't matter. There were so many times in my life where I was following someone else's advice because I didn't know what to do, right? I'm like, well, this person knows, so this is what I should be doing. I would finish and reach that goal and I felt nothing. It's like, cool, cool, man. I just hit this step. Nothing compared to the excitement and celebration that I feel today when I hit a goal that I have set for myself. My money, my way is finally someone celebrating the diversity, the uniqueness of each one of us. It's no longer suppressing or saying that we should all fit into these one size fits all boxes. It's about recognizing and celebrating each one of us in the, all the many different goals, all the different income levels, situations, budgets, all of it. So my money, my way, taking back control of your financial life. These mini lessons are little snapshots from my new book. And you can order your copy, My Money, My Way, Taking Back Control of Your Financial Life from thebudgetmom.com forward slash my money, my way. And I hope all of you have already received your book, have your highlighters out and your pens out and you're marking up the book as we're going through these mini lessons, you're taking notes. I have, I've had some people say, Nico, the book is so beautiful. I don't wanna write it. I don't wanna write in it. Write in it, girl. Highlight it up. Put your sticky notes in it because that's where it's there for. You're learning and, and growing and transforming and self-discovery. It's all happening. So don't be afraid to, to write down in the book.